This is a 2021 GoTrax G4 and today I'm going to review it. Sorry, I had to do that. Hi, I'm Justin from Random Tech Videos and today I'll be reviewing my electric scooter, the GoTrax G4. But before we get into the video, please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss more future Random Tech Videos as the name of the channel implies. It cost at the time of recording $600 on sale for $500. I managed to get it on sale for $450, but it costs $500 currently. This is advertised as a commuter scooter with up to 25 miles of range and 20 miles an hour top speed. First thing I want to talk about is speed, acceleration, and braking. This scooter does reach its top speed of 20 miles an hour quite easily. The acceleration time depends on your weight and the charge of the battery at the time that you're using it, but overall it reaches 20 miles an hour fairly quick. Acceleration, as I said, is good, but the braking is terrible. It only has one rear disc brake. If you just press it too hard, it will just make you skid on the ground, but won't actually stop you. So you have to brake gently and slowly, and hopefully you come to a stop in time. The 350 watt motor supposedly can also be used for regenerative braking, but more on that later. Now I want to talk about the GoTrax G4's controls and features. The controls are quite intuitive, you just press the throttle to go, but wait, it's not that simple. You have to kick it to get started and then you have to press it down twice before it'll actually start taking off. That's probably a safety feature. You have three buttons on the left side of the handlebar. These buttons are used for entering the lock code when the scooter is locked. However, the lock is not very intuitive because you have to press plus or minus to select the numbers and then you have to press the power button to select it. The power button is very simple. It just turns it on and off and the plus or minus buttons can be used to select whether the scooter can go 15 miles an hour or the full 20 miles an hour. In addition, the plus button will turn on the headlight if you press and hold it, and the minus button will make the scooter go walking speed at 3 miles an hour if you press and hold it. The display shows your current speed in miles per hour and also the remaining battery percentage. This display is fairly intuitive and easy to use, but the cruise control is a different story. The cruise control will lock in place when you press the throttle and you hold it in one position for too long. It can be very useful, but it can also lock in position and keep you at a speed if you don't want it to. At least unlike some other scooters by GoTrax, this scooter will beep to let you know that the cruise control is engaged and it displays an icon on the dashboard. One more thing I need to mention about the controls and features. The charging port is located on the right side bottom of the scooter and it works, but it's sometimes a challenge to get the plug in there and it's also the cover, not the best. You have to force it in there and it just doesn't always want to seal well, but it's fine, I guess. The next point I need to discuss is the ride quality. This scooter rides fairly well with its 10 inch air film tires. It's not like if you had a real suspension on the scooter, it's not like a high end Ryan or something, but it's good. Unlike my GoTrax XR, where the weight is in the front tube because that's where all the batteries are and the motor is in the front, this scooter has all the weight at the bottom and it's rear wheel drive so it handles fairly well and I'm not afraid of tipping over when braking hard. Next, I want to talk about this scooter's portability. It's fairly portable because you can just fold it over and transport it, but it's not the best since the handlebars don't fold inward. However, it's, it's totally fine. And at 36 pounds, it is possible to carry it upstairs, but you wouldn't want to be carrying it for a long distance. I do like the folding mechanism though. Unlike my old electric scooter, it can fold with a kickstand down and you don't have to try to straddle it between your legs and balance it as you're folding it. Now I have to mention something that is not this scooter's strong point. It has an advertised range of about 25 miles. But you're only going to get that if you go maybe 7 or 8 miles an hour. You're not going to get 25 miles at full speed. And even then you would only get 25 miles if you're constantly going the same speed, never starting and stopping. The more you start and stop, the more the scooter will drain its battery. I now have to mention a point that I'd rather not mention, but this would not be a fair review if I didn't mention it. The website it's probably unintentional, I'll give them this, but the renderings of the scooter on the website are deceptive. It shows a front disc brake on the website, 
and it says it has dual braking systems, but it does not. It only has a rear brake on the actual scooter. There's only a rear brake. And it claims to have regenerative braking, but I have not noticed any regenerative braking. I know what regenerative braking is like on a scooter because my own GoTrax XR has regenerative braking, which will activate if you very gently squeeze the brake lever and then you squeeze it farther to activate the disc brake. But this does not appear to have any form of regenerative braking, even though it claims to. This lack of regenerative braking makes it so that you lose a lot of range when you start and stop, unlike my old scooter, which can get some of the charge back. Earlier, I forgot to mention a few features, like it has a bell right here, which is fairly obvious, and then it does have a brake light. Unlike some scooters, it's nice to have a brake light that comes on when you put the brakes on so that those behind you know you're stopping. At this point, I think it's time to take it for a ride. Let's go. So now what you probably came here for, would I recommend this scooter? Yes, I would. I know there's some deceptive advertising on the website. I don't think it's intentional, but just realize what you see here is what you get, not what you see on the website. But overall, it's a great scooter for the price, I'd say. It's not some crazy hyper scooter, but it goes well. It feels reasonably powerful and it's portable as a commuter scooter for getting around the city. It makes a lot more sense than renting scooters, for example. If you want to check it out, you can use the link in the description of my video. It's an affiliate link for Amazon. And if you use that link and buy the scooter, I can get a commission from it. So that's just one way to support the channel. No pressure though. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I know I have a long way to go in making these videos. I'm by no means perfect at it, as you can tell. I'm a little awkward on camera too. But if you enjoyed, feel free to like, comment how I can improve, or what you want me to review next, or anything else you want to comment. And until next time, please don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss more future random tech videos. And thanks for watching. Goodbye.